Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Games Intercom video, we're going to be tackling AMD's Vega Cube. Now, this information popped up just slightly after the New Horizon event, but what with me being rather busy during that time covering, obviously, Ryzen, and you guys seem to have really liked the videos concerning Ryzen, and currently I'm putting together a video focusing on all of the solid information we have about Vega that should be up in the next day or two, I haven't managed to jump on top of this one, but I figured today I did want to discuss it because it's rather interesting. So, the Vega Cube, and it doesn't have an official name, at least as far as I know, was first teased by Raja Kodori, and it is being touted as 100 teaflops of GPU performance. There are a couple of caveats to that, and I'll get back into that in just a second. Now, this card is quite interesting because, remember, the Radeon Instinct MR25, which, as far as we can tell, is powered by a single Vega 10 chip, is rated at a performance of 300 watts. So this means that the cooling, or how this is actually achieved with the Radeon, uh, with the Vega Cube, excuse me, is somewhat interesting. From what the basic assumption I can make is that it's either got lower clock speeds or it's going to be somehow liquid cooled which would be rather interesting but obviously we're not 100% certain yet. Now this GPU has a couple of very interesting uh, things about it. The first is that it's stacked vertically. So typically in a PC configuration you would obviously have multiple PCIe slots or whatever and then you would simply stack one card and then you would have another one in another slot, another one in another slot, you get the idea. This is different. So from what I can tell and from the rather crappy images that have popped up, it would appear that the, that the cubes are literally stacked on top of one another. Basically you can have almost like a wall of these cubes and each one of them is capable of 100 teflops of half precision computing. So that's about 50 teflops of full float uh, performance. Now the reason we're very sure of this, well there's a couple of reasons, but the primary one that we know obviously about Vega is the fact that there have been a couple of images which have popped up. For example, the K888G3 with Radeon Instinct. Now it's interesting because it has a very easy to calculate performance ratio since it's listed as a GPU configuration of four Radeon Instinct MI25s. Now, 100 teflops time, uh, sorry, divide by four, well, it's difficult math, but I'm sure we can get there. That's obviously 25, but the asterisk obviously shows float 16 performance. So naturally, if you times that by two, uh, sorry, divide that once again by two, not times, divide by two once again, you're looking at around 12.5 uh, full float performance, which is still, or rather FP16, uh, sorry, FP32, if I can bloody spit the word out, which is still pretty impressive. But you might say, well, are AMD lying with this? Well, I guess it depends on your perspective. I would probably say no because ultimately they are targeting usage scenarios which are not really going to require FP32. They're most likely going to be absolutely fine and dandy with FP16. Therefore, those tasks will inherently speed up. So, for example, things such as deep learning, machine learning, some physics, that type of stuff, is absolutely fine with FP16. I've discussed what FP16 versus FP32 and all this stuff is before. All you need to know for the purpose of this video is basically FP32 is considerably more accurate, but it does so typically at the expense of speed. With more modern GPU architectures from both NVIDIA and AMD, they are now capable of leveraging FP16 performance in a much greater way. And basically you can process and hold the data in a registrar of uh, FP16 Sorry, twice the amount of data if you're holding a float of FP16 versus FP32, meaning a lot more data can be processed a lot faster. For folks who have a interest in consoles, you might also remember this as being muttered and uttered by the lead architect of the PlayStation 4 slash PS4 Pro, Mark Cerny. And obviously he used this number to tout the 8.4 excuse me, T-flops of GPU precision, uh, so GPU performance of the PS4 Pro. Anywho, 
So the cube is actually a rather interesting scenario. And how much it's going to cost is obviously down to, well, our, well, interpretation. It is a very interesting level of performance, however, possibly being offered here. Because ultimately this GPU is going to be very, very cool for certain tasks. Like for server racks, for HPC usage. I can certainly see AMD getting their fingers in a lot of pies. Now, the reason I find this quite interesting, other than the just sheer bonkers level of performance, is that it once again reinforces the fact that AMD are going after a certain market. As great as Vega could be for the desktop, and, you know, I'm hoping that NVIDIA match them, I'm hoping it's really good because, well, I want good competition because that's good for us. Honestly, AMD needs a bit of a win for the mindshare of customers. So... Essentially, what we what AMD would like to happen is to get a couple of wins in HPC. Obviously, they are in the consoles at the moment, and they're certainly using that to their marketing advantage. But to have a lot of GPUs in, let's say, server farms and HPC uses, it's a steady stream of income for them. Because ultimately, the folks that, let's just, for example, say Dell, Google, any company which basically requires a hell of a lot of servers, needs to buy more GPUs than what you and I do. In other words, it's a very lucrative market. So ultimately, it's probably good for AMD to thrive. And obviously, that in essence actually means that we also benefit from that because technology tends to trickle down from the highest end all the way down to the lowest end, which is obviously kind of cool. Um, and well... I guess we're just going to have to see what the hell Vega Cube actually ends up costing, what its usage scenario is, what the actual name is going to be, but I'm kind of looking forward to it. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As I said, it's not a super technical one, this, but it, I thought I would at least uh, bring it to your attention since not huge numbers of people have been covering this and it seems to have slipped somewhat under the radar, which is semi-understandable given the crushing amount of news which has popped up over the past few days regarding obviously Ryzen and uh, Vega and all of these other leaks and bits and bobs. But as I said, stick with us at RGT. I will be doing a full Vega analysis over the next couple of days. I'll try to remember to not be a twit and to link the Ryzen video in the video description. But for now, I'm going to get going. So take care of yourselves. Bye for now.